Coming up on CTV News, an inside look at one of the student campaigns in this year's ASCSU election. Also, how drought conditions in Fort Collins are creating restrictions here at CSU. And later, we'll give you our predictions on this season's Frozen Four. All that and more, you're watching CTV News. Hello and welcome to CTV on this Tuesday, April 2nd. I'm Keith Albertson. And I'm Lena Howland. We're joined right now with weather anchor Austin Harley. Austin, thanks for joining us. Of course, guys. Thanks for having me. So, Austin, the weather's been overcast and wet all day today. Any change in the future? You know, guys, we are looking at a change in the future, but right now, I'm about ready to get rid of this Portland weather. How about you? I know. What's up with the rain? Oh, I don't know. It's just a little system moving through, but thank goodness it's going to move out. But did you guys hear that it dumped a bunch of snow in the mountain, closed I-70, mm -hmm. and it's still closed? Yep, I heard there were accidents all over. Oh my gosh, everywhere. But I'll be back in five minutes with your full weather forecast, looking like a nice rest of the week. Great, we're looking forward to it. Thanks, Austin. Yeah. ASCSU election campaigns are underway on campus, and we have a two-part series featuring each candidate's platforms. Tonight, we'll take a look at Nigel and Andrew's campaign and what they hope to accomplish if elected. My name is Nigel Daniels, and I'm running for ASCSU president in this upcoming election. And my name is Andrew Olson, and I'm running for ASCSU Vice President for the upcoming election. They plan to focus on community, student services, and university enhancement. Within each of those three pillars, there's three subsets. So like in community, there's three different goals that are usually based off the amount of time that it takes. So there's a short term, a mid term, and a long term. Bridging the gap is their ultimate goal. We really want to focus on bridging that gap between administration and students, but also we want to focus on bridging the gap between administration and faculty and faculty and staff. We, we see that there's a huge disconnect across different realms and different areas and different positions. We want to be able to bring all of CSU together so that we're working towards a united goal as RAMS and we're really being proud in our mission. A mission that includes an interactive report of how student fees are being spent. It would break down exactly how much you spent within a month or within a week and where it went. Alongside that, it would be very easy to read. You'd be able to see exactly where your money is going and what it's actually being spent on right now. They also plan on creating the RAM cart, which would circulate the library during midterms and finals week. In reality, it's completely feasible to have a cart that goes through the library and you can bring those snacks and those beverages to those students. And also our plan is to subsidize those so that they're cheaper and that students can get, you know, a snack or a drink for a very low price. And they hope to end each semester on a positive note with an event up to the student's choice. We've heard Taste of Fort Collins. We've heard another carnival, bringing a whole bunch of just fun things like the bouncy castles, all the games. There's been a lot of input. We want this to be a moment where not only students are coming out, but maybe we have some administrators, maybe we have some faculty who are also engaging in this experience with us. So this is really a time for us to unite as a community and be something more than just a college campus. Voting for the ASCSU presidential election will begin on April 8th and will continue until April 10th at 5 p.m. on RamWeb. CTV reporter Tom Mullen will feature the opposing candidates, Wendy Bowling and John Stockley, on Thursday. And in other election news, the Fort Collins mayoral election closed Tuesday night as residents voted for their next mayor. The two candidates running for mayor are Karen Wykenaut and Eric Sutherland. We'll be, we'll be getting the results of the election next week on April 10th. One company in Fort Collins is moving out of Colorado to protest new gun legislation. The legislation is requiring background checks for private and online gun sales. HiViz is known for manufacturing accessories for guns. The CEO, Philip Howe, said he feels conflicted about leaving, but the legislation is infringing upon the constitutional rights of his customer base. Colorado is no longer allowing electronics to be thrown away into landfills. Instead, people are being told to recycle their old TVs and other appliances at stores like Best Buy or Staples. Electronic devices are known to carry mercury and lead in them, which can hurt the environment as well as human health. Larimer County officials are debating whether the Galena fire was started illegally or not. Fort Collins attorneys are investigating if there is enough evidence to press criminal charges. The fire that started in West Fort Collins consumed over 1,300 acres, but is now 100% contained. More details on how the fire started will be released after an investigation this week. And now to some international headlines in the South Pacific. 
North Korean officials on Tuesday are saying they will use their operational uranium enrichment program to further expand their nuclear weapons arsenal. This is the first time North Korea said it would use the program to produce nuclear weapons since um, its unveiling as an electricity generator in 2010. And Japan is pushing away from post-war pacifism pacifism in the past few months. Japan has been mobilizing their troops and running war games in preparation to defense against a possible war. Their anxiety comes from China's insistent claims over disputed islands and North Korea's escalating nuclear threats, all of which are heating things up in the South Pacific. Coming up in, on CTV News, a study showing Larimer County has the most rabies cases in Colorado this year. And I'll be telling you about the newly put in place water restrictions here at CSU. Don't go away. Colorado State University is committed to expanding access to education. Today, that includes online learning. CSU brings faculty and programs to students around the state and around the world. With flexibility to earn a degree online from a world-class university and the ability to balance education with work and family. Learn more at succeedwithcsu.org. Thanks for staying right here with us on CTV 11 News. We still have some flurries falling outside of our studio, but those won't last much longer. If we take a, look behind, take a look at the map behind me here, you can see that the low tonight in Fort Collins is going to be 31, and there's some shower activity right to our south through Loveland. We also have some showers falling across the high country, and that closure I told you about on I-70 just cleared up, so the I-70 is back open again. Temperatures tonight will dip into the 30s along the front range, but if we take a look at the current conditions outside of the studio, you can see that it's 43 degrees right now. We haven't quite hit that 31 yet. A mix of uh, snow and rain is falling outside the studio and winds from the east at 5 miles an hour. How's it feeling? More like 40 right now. This rain-snow mix will transition to all snow around midnight and it will taper off before sunrise tomorrow at 6.40 a.m. My forecast is calling for a ton of sun tomorrow. Highs across the state will peak above 60. We'll see 60 here in Fort Collins. 59 in Denver, 67 in Grand Junction, and 40s and 50s across the high country. Warm weather like this should settle in for the rest of the week, and your weekly outlook is looking pretty, pretty great. Let's take a look. Tomorrow, uh, those snow showers, there's a chance in the early morning hours before you wake up, high of 60. Warming to 66 on Thursday, near 70 on Friday. A uh, cool down over the weekend, 60s, upper 50s, sunny skies. And then we have another chance for rain and snow come in again on Monday with highs in the mid 50s. Those warm dry days will be great weather for getting outside, but it certainly won't solve the drought problem. Keith has more on that issue. Keith? Thanks, Austin. We'll be looking forward to more rain. Yesterday, however, new statewide water restrictions went into effect. This is a result of the reoccurring drought conditions Colorado has been facing. The, the part that we're concerned about is the drought that we have been in and that we continue to be in uh, because of the dryness that definitely may lend itself to additional wildland fire starts this year. Uh, fuels in the wildland area uh, typically will dry out fairly quickly, especially when it is warm, dry, and, and windy. Larimer County residents will be limited to watering their lawns two days per week, and there will be no watering between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. The Lori Student Center hosted a seminar Tuesday on the common myths and misconceptions about the agriculture and beef production industry. The seminar included a number of professionals that spoke on topics such as natural labels and hormones in meat production. Guests enjoyed a buffet lunch followed by a lecture by Dr. Richard Bowen where he discussed the West Nile virus epidemic in 2009 which mainly affected horses and people after being exposed to the mosquitoes carrying the disease. And there are more reports of wild animals getting rabies in Fort Collins. Officials are telling the public to be careful with their pets and children while in the presence of wild animals. These animals may bite if they feel threatened and could possibly have rabies. And after the break, I'll be giving you an inside look at the prospective student tours here at CSU. And later, Riley Adams will have your sports update on the Frozen Four. Stay tuned. 
Packers. Viking. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Now that spring is finally here, potential CSU students are getting a taste for what life would be like as a Ram. It's tour season for CSU and you might have noticed large group of high schoolers milling around campus. Because applications for fall semester of 2013 are already past due, many of the students on tour are juniors in high school who are getting an early look at colleges. During this peak time of year, approximately 20 tour groups are led each day by admissions ambassadors. Tours are really important because it's our first look into student life. Um, there's three reasons, that, the top three reasons students come to a university. The first one being tuition, the second one being academic program, and the third one is like how they interact with a current student who goes there. So as an admissions ambassador, I feel like I have a very um, important job showcasing the CSU culture and how CSU really works and how, um, how proud I am to be a CSU Ram and really getting that student perspective across. Campus tours will be going on through April 26th. Our new rec center might be better than you think. According to a guide to the best colleges in America, the CSU Rec Center is rated as one of the nation's best. It has been recognized for its 38-foot climbing wall, as well as its 35-person spa. The rec center was also recognized for its environmentally friendly features. CTV reporter Mackenzie O'Keefe has the full story on Wednesday night. Now we're going to send it over to Riley Adams with your sports update. Now that spring is here, baseball is back in action. Your Colorado Rockies are now tied at four with the Milwaukee Brewers in the bottom of the fifth, and Tulo and Cargo have hit their second home runs of the season. While the NCAA March Madness is in full effect, NCAA's hockey version of this tournament is heading to the Frozen Four. This year, the Frozen Four was unpredictable. It includes four teams each looking to secure their program's first NCAA championship. This is the first time this has happened since 1958, and only the second time since the tournament's inaugural event. Yale, Massachusetts Lowell, St. Cloud State, and Quinnipiac won NCAA regional championships this weekend and earned their ticket to Pittsburgh for the 2013 Frozen Four. The only team out of these four contenders that has made it to the Frozen Four is Yale in 1952, where they finished third. The other three teams make their Frozen Four debuts at Console Energy Center for the national semifinals. This is another first for this tournament, excluding the inaugural event in 1948. Quinnipiac came into the tournament as the overall number one seed, and they had a lot to prove. They defeated Kinesius and skated right past Union in the second round of the East Regional. The Midwest Regional champ to advance is the St. Cloud Huskies. They breezed through this region with wins over Notre Dame and Miami of Ohio. And it's been a long time coming for Yale, and they earned their spot. Yale gave two of the best performances, defeating Minnesota and North Dakota, who are two huge powerhouses in WCHA hockey. The final team to round out the four is Mass Lowell, and they have beaten Wisconsin and New Hampshire to advance to the Frozen Four. And they say they are ready for the big leagues. The Frozen Four will take place on April 11th in Pittsburgh. Yale will play Mass Lowell in the first semis, and Quinnipiac takes on St. Cloud for the second. The championship will be on the 13th of April. Now, Lena and Keith, I'm going with Yale as my winner. They've been hot, and I don't think they're going to stop. Who are your winners for this tournament? You know, I would say Quinnipiac is my favorite because, you know, they were ranked as the mm -hmm. number one seed. They're the favorite to win, so I'll support that. I say that's a good choice, Lena. How about you, Keith? i got to go with Massachusetts Lowell. Mm -hmm. I just think their goalie is too good, Connor Hellebuck. He's already been drafted by the Winnipeg Jets. He's only a freshman. Get that. So I just I don't think he can be beaten. The first two games, he only gave up one goal total. His, his defense is just going to shut everybody down. I, I'd have to agree with you. He's a great goalie. And any team that wins will be great. All right. Well, thanks for coming tonight. It's always a pleasure to have thanks you. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for you tonight. To see more of us, check out our Facebook page or visit our website. We'll see you soon.